Hello, hello, Erica. All of you. How are you guys doing? I'm going to share this video real quick. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm just going to share this. Okay, so I just shared that. Sorry, it took me a second. Um, so today I wanted to just hop on. I look a little crooked. I got my binder on from my surgery. I'm trying to get back into the motion of everything, being as now I'm able to sit up. I'm a little bit swollen right now, but we're going to go with it. Um, so today I wanted to hop on and go over 10 types of content that sell. A lot of times we just post things and we just post things just to post things when in actuality we need to learn to post with intent we need to learn to post content that is valuable that is attractive that's going to bring people into us that want to be friends with us that are is going to make people want to buy from us that's going to get them from cold to warm that's going to get teach them or get them to like us, love us, know us, and trust us. Because if they do that, then they will purchase from you. So, um, let me make sure that this is in here first. Because I don't see anybody. Oh, let's see. So if you're on here, just say hey so I know that um, people are on. Oh great, Facebook has me blocked from doing something again. Um, gotta love it, Facebook is just being a jerk to me lately. So. All right, so there's 10 types of content. There's tons of content, but there's 10 main ones that will get people into the realm of knowing you, liking you, trusting you, wanting to buy products from you, um, attracting people to you versus being Spamala Pamela, um, because I only use attraction marketing. I don't cold message, never have, never will. Um, it's just not my thing. Um, I don't message you unless you, you express interest in my product. Um, I I don't message you unless you say info, more info, interested, unless you say message me, that's just me. Um, so there's 10 types of content. So number one is going to be your story. You want to share your story at least once a week. You should be sharing your story. So maybe like write up a paper like this and say Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, Friday is my day that I pitch. Friday's payday for most people. So, on Fridays, I pitch my product. So, every other day, I'm providing you value that is going to make you feel like she's provided me with so much value that I have to buy something from her. Say hey if you're coming in so I know that you are on. I see a couple people are hopping on. So you want to make sure that um, you share your story at least one time a week. Pick a certain day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Because we already got Friday filled, right? So I'm going to say Mondays I'm going to share my story. Okay, so now I have Mondays taken and Fridays taken, right? Okay, so next you're going to, number two, hey Lisa, so next you're going to want to give an educational piece of content. So you're going to want to teach somebody a tip, a trick, a tutorial, a uh, meal prep, a um, workout video, uh, Photoshop, scroll, 
um, you want it to reel people in. You want them to want to follow you because you're providing them with value. Now, you want to make sure that you're using clear images. I see a lot of posts that would be great, but the images are so blurry that they're not attractive or they're pictures, but they're not bright. Filters, use filters. I use Snapchat for everything. I take my pictures and Snapchats with a filter and then I save them because there's a little download arrow. Save them, post them to wherever you want them. Okay, bright, clear images. If you post pictures of food, post you holding your plate. If you need an example, go to my Facebook page. I posted one tonight. I posted a tip slash a picture of me. People are following you. They want to they want to follow you. They want to see you. They want to know who they're following. They want to get to know you. So make sure like if you're going to post a food that you made that you're posting a picture with you holding it. Number three is going to be a testimonial. Share a testimony. Facts tell, but stories sell. People relate to stories. Stories are going to people reeled in the it'll it'll link to them in some way so try to share different stories like one week or one day share something about somebody with a thyroid issue or somebody with a blood pressure issue or somebody that has menopause or breastfeeding or something along those lines share a testimony that's going to be the third best the fourth is going to be called a polarizing post a lot of people have never heard of that, but a polarizing post is going to be a myth buster. Like, for instance, people think that carbs make them fat. So it's going to be something that you can um, do a catchy line. Pictures stop people, but your storyline is what keeps people. And it, and so it attracts them in. So you want to make sure that you got a catchy storyline um, that's going to make them want to stay reading. Um, you may lose, lose some followers because they might not agree with what you think, but that's okay. What I always say is bless and release because those aren't your people. You should be able to be organically you and attract your people. You shouldn't have to fake and be somebody else and attract the wrong people because they're not going to stay because you're genuinely going to end up reverting back to who you are and then that's going to turn them away and then you're going to lose them. So why not just be authentically you attract you people that are like you like I'm a mother of a child that has a sensory disorder um, I am a mother of biracial children I am I could join groups of um, mixed race children or mixed babies hair um, I could join uh, softball groups um, you can join mom groups, um, just different things like that. So you attract your people. You want to always have your people in front of you. Um, so the next is going to be number five. It's going to be entertainment. You want to be funny. Like, um, I know there's one girl that always, always talks about Taco Tuesday on Tuesday. Like she'll do funny memes with funny sayings and on Taco Tuesdays because she absolutely loves tacos. People know her as the taco girl because yes, she sells health and wellness, but she loves tacos. So she always talks about tacos on Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, they know her for that. Um, so you want to think of things that people can relate to you. So like for instance, say that I am, um, say that um, I am a taco person and I post taco memes. So you want people to see a meme like that and then send it to you because they thought of you when they seen it. Sorry, I got something in my tooth. I just noticed that <laughs> I just ate dinner. Um, so you want people to think, um, like I know a girl that loves G-Wagons. So every time I see a G-Wagon, I think of her and I will send a picture of it if I've seen it. Um, if, you know, I'm following Alicia and 
I know her daughter loves horses and I see a pretty horse, I would send her a horse picture. You know, so think of things, get to know people on a different level. Like, yes, your job is to get people to know you, but you need to get to know people on a different level. So, like, if I see something funny or if I see something relatable to one of my clients or potential people, I'll send them that meme. And that's an act of following up just by simply touching them. You know, going live is really awesome because when you go live, that's an indirect follow-up. You want to indirect follow up with people all the time. Like if you get in front of people's faces all the time, that's following up, going live. That's a follow up. So indirectly getting in front of them or sending them a message or um, I'm trying to think of something that I did recently. Um, I know I have like a friend that a uh, client that's always posting about her flowers. She's always posting like her banana trees because she lives at the beach. So if I saw something cute, I'd send it to her and be like, I so thought of you. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? You know, something like that. Um, another one is going to be what a lot of people would think don't do, but you want to do like an objection, an objection post. Um, so what you want to think about is your um, ideal client and you want to think of, hold on, I'm trying to think of how I can say this. Um, think of an, an objection. Okay, so you see people say, um, let me see, you see people say, I don't have money or I don't have time or I can't buy it because XYZ so you want to do like an objection an objection post and say something along the lines of like you don't have the money to for your health but yet you go and drink and party on the weekends um, or you know you went on vacation or if did you know that if you go to Starbucks every day that's what five to seven or eight dollars a day multiply that times 30 boom you can afford your product now so you have to change your mindset um, mm -hmm. making them think about things that they typically wouldn't think about and maybe they'll want to see why they should be using the product hey Sean can you bring me my charger please um and then number seven is going to be an invitation post so you want to take a day and you want to do an invitation post and you want to share with people what you offer not only that you want to show who it's for you want to share a problem that you're solving with what you offer and you can share your freebies with this and you can do this one time a week only sean babe it's about to die can you bring my charger my phone's about to die um, so you want to um, do this one time a week. You want to talk about your program. Um, you want to say something like, I'm taking X amount of people on. You want to show a sense of urgency. You want to give cutoff dates. You want to talk about promos. So whenever you're trying to pitch somebody, can you plug it right there? So whenever you're trying to pitch somebody, you want to put a sense of urgency, put a date or put a time on it. Like, I have a giveaway going on right now for anybody that purchases with me um, a Michael Kors watch and they have to order by the end of the month. Thank you, babe. Is she asleep? Yes. Did you put her down? Yes. Um, you want to put a sense of urgency that, hey, if you order by the end of the week or by the end of the month, whatever your promo is, um, you get entered to win, like mine, a Michael Kors watch. Every item that you order gets you an entry in to win the Michael Kors watch. So put urgency on it. Um, the next one is going to be an inspiring post. You want to inspire, you want to motivate, you want to uplift, and you want to empower. All of your posts want to be like that. You don't want to be complaining, you don't want to be bitching, you don't want to be nagging, you don't want to be arguing on your post. If you have any of that crap on your Facebook, you need to go delete it off because you're attracting the wrong people. If you are what you attract what you are. If you want to attract the bitchy, complaining people, keep your posts like that. But you can't be 
just like this, for example, if you are posting about a health and wellness product, you have this amazing health and wellness product, but yet you're always complaining about my back hurts, my neck aches, my stomach hurts, this and this and this. And they're like, well, evidently her product ain't that good if she's always hurting, complaining about blah, blah, X, Y, Z. You know, you really got to think about what you post and automatically go to your Facebook and turn it to where nobody can post on your page but you unless you approve it. Like you literally have to accept approve for it to hit your page. I see like people have great posts, but then they have like all this crap. Like somebody tagged me in something earlier that was like, uh, for example, I don't remember what it's called, but you know, on Halloween when they have haunted house, who's going to be the murderer? Who's going to be the one that runs screaming and they tag like a hundred people. I don't want that shit on my page. You know, get rid of that. Get rid of the ability for people to control what is in front of your customers because your customers see that. And then, like, some people will post amazing posts, but then they post all these shares that are completely crap or junk that is not pertaining to their business, that's not pertaining to their brand, or the image that they should be having out there for their clients that is attracting them. So I suggest, like, Go find, like, if you like Alicia, if you like me, if you like Tanya, if you like Ann, I suggest as leaders, you know, <clears throat> go into our pages and looking at how our pages are set up, looking at what we post. If you see, if you're not sure what to post, go look at one of our pages and be like, okay, today she posted this. I'm going to go post my version of that. Or on Tuesday, Tanya posted this. Okay, I'm going to go post my version of that. Like if it's a picture of her kids and her hanging out, go take a picture of you and your kids hanging out and share it and put your twist on it that fits you and your story. You know what I mean? So next you want to go in, uh, number nine is share, um, sorry, um, that inspiring post. You want to make your audience feel or think different. For instance, you want to, them to believe that it's possible. You want to help them like lose all their fears that they have um, and know that when people come to my page, they're like, oh, they knew my story from back when I was a single mom struggling paycheck to paycheck. There's people that have been following me for six years that literally know everything that I've been through. They knew me when I was super fat. They knew me when I lost weight. They knew me when I was pregnant. They knew me when I was like going through depression. Like they knew me and what I was going through and they see where I was and how far I've come and that gives them hope. Sharing your story gives people hope. So next you want to go behind the scenes. You want people to, video is best, I will say that, but you want to be real and raw. You want to show people what you're working on. You want um, to show this is best in stories, like share your morning routine, whether it's making your coffee a healthier way, making your breakfast. Do you write I am statements in the morning? Do you have a journal in the morning that you write? Show people what you're doing. Show people if you're not showing people that you're taking your supplements in the morning, how do they know that you're taking your supplements? You could just be saying that you're taking your supplements, but you're not. But you can physically show them that you're taking your supplements. If you look a hot mess, look at me right now. I like a hot mess. I have a filter on, so I don't look a hot mess. Filters are your best friend. If you're worried about it, flip a filter on. Do it. <laughs> you know, just get the post. And last, you need a CTA post. Everybody should have a CTA. A call to action should be at the end of every post, every story, every video, and so what I see is a lot of people are taking the stories that we have and they're not putting the call to action at the end. On the last slide, every day, you should be putting that poll. Yes, not a no, yes, or more info. Never put no, because we don't like negativity. We don't do that around here. So yes, or info. Yes, more info. Yes, how can I do this? Um, yes lose weight or yes whatever promo you have going on something you need a call to action if you're posting um a, a post that you have something going on and you're like i'm looking for five moms ready to lose x amount of weight and tone up 
So comment below if you're interested. That is a call to action. You need a call to action at the end of every video, at the end of your posts that are marketing posts. Um, so there's many of these um, topics or whatnot, but these are the best ones that you can use to turn those that are in cold market to warm market. Um, show that you know what you're doing. Like, you might not know what you're doing, but they don't know that. Like, half the time, I'm going live and I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but I do, you know? If I don't know, then I'll find out, you know? Just like all the ingredients list that I have, you know, um, I don't, I knew the, I knew the basics of what the product did. I knew energy, appetite, detox, prebiotic, probiotic, sleep aid, nootropics, or mood enhancement but I didn't know all these other ingredients. I looked them up. Some people will be like, well, how does how do you do this? Or what do you do that? Google, Google is your best friend. Like if you don't know the answer, Google it versus looking for somebody to give you the answer, go and find the answer. Because if you think about it like this, if you give your team all the answers, they're never going to go and find the answers themselves. They're always gonna to come to you looking for the answers, which in turn is gonna turn, they're gonna teach their people to come to them for answers that they're not gonna know. And then they're gonna to come to you for even more answers. And it's just gonna keep adding up, adding up, adding up. So you need to take it on yourself versus before you come to like your upline, ask yourself, can I find this information myself? Because don't forget, your upline has a business that they're building too. I'm not saying don't go to your upline. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying ask yourself before you message your upline. I know my upline is busy too and she's building her business. And I know she has a ton of people um, depending on her. Can I find this answer? If you can, go look for it. If you're unsure, try to find it. Then go to your upline. So, um, so like what I would, let's see. Um, I'm going to see if I can help you do this. Um, all right, let's see. So Mondays, I'm going to do my story. I'm going to put Wednesdays, I'm going to do an invitation post. So on Wednesdays, I'm going to do an invitation to my wellness group. All right, let's see. I'm gonna see if I can help y'all figure out a schedule. On Tuesday, I am going to do an educational post. And let's see. Um, on Thursday, I'm gonna do a testimonial. Saturday, I'm going to do polarizing. Slash myth buster is what that means. And then Sunday fun day. Look at Sunday fun day as entertainment. And let's see. Um, and you can break it down and so Monday um, you can say Monday you'll share your story Tuesday I'm gonna teach somebody how to do something if I don't know look up Google YouTube you learn something teach it learn something teach it this could be simply like I did a video on teaching somebody to make the egg muffins it's teaching them to make a healthier breakfast um, Wednesday, I'm going to invite people to my wellness group. I'm going to do just like I do an ad in mm -hmm. yard sale groups. I'm going to do an ad on my Facebook page. Thursday, I'm going to share my testimony. Um, I'm going to share a testimony. Friday, I'm going to pitch people my business and try to sell to them. Saturday, I'm going to polarize slash myth bust. I'm going to have like a little bit of a controversial topic. And then Sunday fun day, think of Sunday fun day as entertainment and funny. 
keep it lighthearted. And then you can double up some days if you want, if you feel like it. You can make two posts in one day. So it's totally up to you um, how you do it. It's your business. You can run it how you want. So hopefully that gave you some value. Um, and maybe you can utilize this for your business. So I hope you all have a great day night um and i believe we have our team trained in here shortly so you can hop on and join us for our training don't forget the zoom link is in this page or a lot of times it's shared in our chat too talk to you soon